Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to do a review of the Galaxy A80. I'm going to share with you guys my experience of using this device for the last couple of weeks, as well as the experience of using this on a long trip that I took with the family. Um, the cameras that we have here are basically a unique experience. The ability of using the main sensors on the back, using them on the front, using this pop-up mechanism, enables us to have a very unique experience, a full display that has no notches, no teardrops, nothing in there to basically obtrude using this device. Uh, but there was some compromises done with the A80, and I would like to share with you guys the things that I liked and the things that I did not like about the brand new Galaxy A80. This is TK, let's check it out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified whenever we put out new videos on the channel. Now about a couple of weeks ago I did the unboxing for you guys on this device and again I shared with you guys my initial impressions then and now that we've had it for about a couple of weeks I want to share with you guys how does basically my impressions have held up. Am I still impressed with this device? Am I still looking forward to seeing some of the things that it can offer us? Or has there been some issues and basically what are they and let's talk about that part. Uh, we'll start off by the specifications real quick. We have a 6.7 inch 1080p OLED panel. We have dual sensors on the back, a 48 megapixel sensor and basically an 8 megapixel wide angle lens that you're able to use on the front by just basically switching the camera. And what you notice right there is that the camera modules pop up and it reverses. The camera module reverses to the front and we're able to use the main sensors from the back on the front giving us the ability of actually getting a full display without notches, without any kind of coverage. And then basically it makes it just a massive 6.7 inch display that you're able to enjoy all the content you want, especially being an OLED panel. Now, as far as RAM and storage, we have 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage, and a 3700 milliamp battery that is supported with the brand new charger, the 25 watt charger that's included from Samsung. Now, that one's included in the box, and I did a separate video for you guys showcasing the speed that this, char that this device will charge up on. Um, and there were some surprises there as well. So again, a link for that will be in the description below. The really nice thing in the box is that they do include a case for us, because one of the main things about this device is that it's very unique, and they also need to have a case that uh, not only a covers the device but also allows us to use the camera modules and make sure that they pop up and come back in without any issues. Uh, we don't have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. We do have dual SIM support here and I'm running it on Project Fi and I'm getting LTE in the US. Um, we do have one microphone at the top, a volume rocker here, no dedicated Bixby button, but you do have the way of setting it up if you'd like to use Bixby. Uh, we have one of the antenna bands, of course. On the right side, we have the power button and two of the other antenna bands. On the back, again, the main cameras, the 48 and the eight megapixel sensor, the dual tone LED flash. And of course, one of the main things that we have here again is just basically a very nice, very solid finish on this. This device does not feel light. It is nice. It is definitely glass on the back and glass on the front. We do have a screen protector that is pre-applied on the display. And again, a 6.7 inch beautiful display. Um, to start off with the things that I really enjoy about Samsung devices is the ability of installing and using live wallpapers like this on your phone and of course customizing them to your own liking. But for me, it's always going to be Goku with Alter Instinct or I mean, Alter Instinct Mastered. Um, and floating and this is the new design. Uh, there's a separate video for that of course I'll give you guys a link to that uh, showcasing how I did that on my device. Now that we've covered one thing that we like let's go ahead and cover one thing that is not necessarily the best implementation and that's the fingerprint sensor. Uh, you notice right there the fingerprint sensor does actually work and I can put my finger in there and it actually works pretty reasonably. Uh, but it is basically almost like a, an eight times out of 10 works, but there's always a couple of times that it doesn't. And, and when it doesn't, it just basically becomes very frustrating that you can't really, you have to basically press and hold. This is not the same technology that we saw on the S10 and the S10 Plus. Uh, unfortunately, this is definitely, I would say, maybe a generation behind. But again, the display is beautiful. It is massive. The bezel are extremely, extremely minimal. Uh, the camera itself is very, very nice. It's decent and it'll, I'll show you guys some samples of that. And I took it with me when I went to a Japan trip with the family and it just looks absolutely fantastic. And of course, that gives us the ability of using the full display. Uh, of course, YouTube doesn't normally crop for that, but you're able to basically zoom in and you're able to enjoy the entire display. The camera modules enables us to have that. Um, unfortunately, we do not have stereo speakers because of the camera module implementation. And the earpiece itself vibrates through the display as you notice that we don't have an actual earpiece here at all. Uh, but overall, as far as call quality and actually just sending and receiving calls, everything sounds really nice. The speaker that we have at the bottom is actually pretty loud, even if I do other things. Uh, and that's something you cannot do with the existing audio because if I switch back to the existing audio... Definitely a good sounding speaker, but not necessarily the best sounding speaker that we have since we also don't have stereo speakers. 
Uh, the actual implementation here of the software is actually pretty nice. We have the way of customizing it. We are able to use GoodLock. GoodLock is compatible and you're able to update it. You're able to even use the, uh, the recent application switcher there. All of the stuff that you normally can use with normal S10 devices are here. The camera module that we have here or the camera application does have the scene optimizer. We have live focus, pro mode, panorama. Night mode is also a dedicated mode here, which, which unfortunately I still don't have on my S10 Plus, but it is definitely coming. Of course, we have hyperlapse, slow motion, uh, super slow motion, and live focus, all the things that we normally can. And then of course, when we switch the cameras to the front, both the sensors that we had in the back are now working for us in the front. Um, the difference though is when we go into photo, you'll notice we have three different options here. When I switch it back to the back, we only have two. We have standard and wide angle lens, which essentially is just switching between the 48 megapixel sensor and the eight megapixel sensor. When we switch it to the front, it has kind of a stop in between, which I would probably call it just a step back. You'll notice it's just a little bit more. And of course I can fit way more here in the actual image. Uh, you can also use live focus on the front, photo, video, um, 4K at 30 frames per second is the maximum that we're able to get here. Let's go ahead and turn off the super steady. Um, it does support super steady, just keep that in mind. So UHD at 30, UHD at 30 in front and the back. Um, but when we do turn on the super steady option, it does downgrade the video quality to 1080p, but it does a great job at that. And I'll share with you guys a quick bit that I did here um, in one of the shrines in Tokyo. Definitely, as you can see, once it drops down to 1080p in good lighting, this actual the video quality is absolutely fantastic. Um, now, as far as photography and some of the things I was able to do during that day, I, at that point, I wasn't using the G-Cam mod yet. And as you notice right there, I have two different camera modules. I have the G-Cam that's been ported over from the Mi 9T. And of course, we have here the basically the standard camera application that we have. Uh, keeping in mind here that we are running the Snapdragon 730 chipset, we are not running the 855. So just keep in mind that we are not running the fastest chipset on the market, but it should be able to handle almost anything we want to do. And starting off with some of these images, uh, this is at the entrance of the same shrine that I showed you guys in the video. And of course, you could see here, uh, using the wide angle lens will always be very beneficial to be able to fit in so much more. And it was definitely a packed, hot and humid day there. Uh, everybody was basically enjoying themselves. And of course, the colors were very nice. Um, unfortunately, it felt like the camera wasn't necessarily performing the best in all the experiences. This is again all during the day right now. And I'll share with you guys some images that we took at night. Um, overall, as far as the super steady picture quality in the video was really nice. Again, if you want that super steady, really nice stabilized video that we saw in the S10, the S10 Plus line, this definitely transfers here. It just it's capped at 1080p as it actually crops the image and it uses a digital uh, stabilizer to be able to get us to get that really nice steady images. And of course, using the standard focal length, the 48 megapixel sensor, I feel like definitely performs always the best. And when we jump over to the wide angle lens, we're able to fit more, but unfortunately that does actually kind of compromise the color quality as we get, basically lose some of that saturation in there and it becomes a little bit more muted. Now switching over to basically use the cameras from the back to the front, you definitely can appreciate having more with the wide angle lens and able to fit more people in there. Now switching it over to night photography, uh, I started doing some comparisons between the main camera and night sight using the G-cam cord that we have here. Um, now this image was taken straight with the camera itself using the night mode and you notice there's some basically a brightening that it does end up doing um, right on the background, right around the Tokyo Tower. It, it, and I think what essentially it's doing is just pulling in all that light from all the different buildings. But then when we switch over to the G-cam, this is basically where it gets a little bit better. You'll notice that the image is actually much better uh, focused correctly. We're getting all the light images and everything is basically just coming out very nice and nothing too bright, just giving us the ability of focusing on all the lights uh, from the different buildings that are coming in. Not that it's a better image in a sense as far as detail, but it definitely gives us a better focus and it doesn't give us that false uh, brightening that's going on overall. And here's a quick video sample using the main camera, just showing a basically a nighttime video straight from the same area. Uh, just to again, give you guys a good experience of what video during nighttime would look like on this phone. Scene optimizer will always work really nicely for you guys, especially if you're trying to take pictures of food and things that you're trying to enjoy, obviously, during your trip. Uh, and this was a really, really one of my most delicious ramens I've ever had in my life. And this dish, 
disappeared really, really quickly, very, very fast. And the last image I want to share with you guys real quick is this is just walking around in the street uh, in Shinjuku and of course just taking some nighttime photography. Uh, this was taken straight with the camera itself and I got an, actually a decent image using the night mode. But of course, we get a much better image coming out from Gcam. And I feel like it's almost software optimization at this point. It's not a hardware limitation. We know that the 48 megapixel sensor is actually capable of doing so much more. Now, it is an f2.0, just keep that in mind. So the amount of light that we're able to get on the sensor is not the same as some of the other devices on the market but it should still perform pretty well. And this image is not that it's bad, but if you notice kind of like it's not as sharp. And when we jump over to the image directly from the Gcam, it just looks very, very nice. And it's very similar to what we can usually expect from Pixel devices. Now, that was the camera experience. And of course, that was, I feel a lot of people will want to know exactly how that worked. As far as media consumption and battery life, this device is a champ. Um, all day battery life when I was in uh, Tokyo walking around, daily running hotspot, using the camera, taking images, watching uh, content on the train and all of that, it actually had no problem handling everything we wanted to do. The images on this will look really nice. It's definitely really good at a 1080p panel. It's not a QHD, but again, a 6.7 inch display that it's just basically very, very nice. Um, audio quality, when you're using it with the headset, you are able to actually turn on Dolby Atmos. And that's something that will also optimize the audio quality for you guys. We do have kit space, Bixby routines if you want to use those. All the options, as I mentioned to you guys, gestures, Wi-Fi calling if, you're the, if your uh, network supports it, of course, as well as LTE. So the overall experience of using the Galaxy A80, I would have to say is that this is a solid performer. Battery life is solid on the daily experience. I was not able to kill the battery even after an entire day of being out, taking videos, images, sharing my internet connection using hotspot. And of course, doing day-to-day -day activity, checking emails, social media, all of that stuff while I was traveling. So this is definitely a solid performer. Um, I did use this on Project File while I was in Tokyo and this was definitely very nice and very enjoyable. It does support dual SIM, no expandable storage. That's a little bit of a downer there. Um, but we do have 8 gigs of RAM supporting the Snapdragon 730 that we have here and it provides us a very good, um, I would say a decent experience on the device. No hiccups, no issues as far as the UI, but I do notice some a little bit of a slowdown in image processing when you're taking too many images in a row, uh, especially with the camera. Now, talking about the camera application that we have here, this is running the latest that we have for the A80 and it has some of the best features that Samsung offers us, namely the night mode, the hyperlapse, all of that stuff that you normally expect from Samsung phones. Um, although for some reason the images are not necessarily showing up to be the best when we get into a little bit of a low light experience, during day when there's enough light, everything looks really good. The 48 megapixel sensor will perform the best for you where the wide angle lens is definitely a much smaller, I would say a much bigger drop in quality from 48 down to eight. And you notice that the color punch is not really done there. So for some reason, almost like there's not as much processing done at the eight megapixel sensor where it is done very nicely on the 48. Uh, the steady video that we have here, of course, downsized down to 1080p from 4K is something that you'd have to basically be okay with, but overall provides us really good as far as basically steady, clear images and a really good video when you're using them. Uh, but just keep in mind the actual down, uh, the down cropping down to 1080p because that's what it does. Essentially, it's shooting at a much bigger wide angle lens, but then cropping it to 1080p to give us that really good steady image uh, when you're looking at the video. No three and a half millimeter headphone jack and the earpiece in here is actually not that bad as far as listening to audio since it's actually behind the the display. Um, we do have Dolby Atmos for stereo, for stereo. If we do have Dolby Atmos for the audio, if you plug in your headphones, and that actually does kind of uh, compensate for a little bit if you're not using it just to listen to it straight with the speaker. Uh, although it's actually pretty decent. Would I recommend the Galaxy 80 to anybody deciding to pick up a Galaxy device in 2019? Um, I would say if price point is a concern for you guys, because you keep in mind, this is actually cheaper than the Galaxy S10e, which starts off at about $750 in the US. So this is roughly around $600 or so, depending on where you're able to pick it up. Uh, it does support LTE, it does have dual SIM, it doesn't have expandable storage, but it does actually have a much bigger form factor than what we get with the Galaxy S10e. And I feel like that's a little bit where you can kind of look at what this offers and the other devices do. Um, I feel like this is definitely a better implementation of what the Galaxy S10e has to offer us if you're looking for a bigger device that's cheaper than the other three big devices on the Galaxy S line. So that's something you want to look into it. 6.7 inch display. Uh, we do have eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage, front facing and back facing the main sensors. So we're not losing any issues as far as switching over to uh, maybe a, a different sensor in the front. This will definitely give you the same experience on the front cameras as it is on the back as we're actually using uh, the same camera module again as we normally use them on the back and on the front. Uh, the mechanism does make some noise, so just be aware of that. It's not super loud, but it's something you, you'll be able to hear. 
Uh, but again, I feel like this is basically where it kind of falls in between. I feel like this is right between the S10e and the S10, but it's cheaper than the S10e. So it's definitely a great deal, a great images in good lighting. Um, it works okay at night, and I feel like software can optimize the camera experience as time goes on. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have ever used any of the A-Line devices, if you're considering getting the Galaxy A80, as I feel like it's a definitely a solid performer with a few minor shortcomings that could definitely be updated in the future with some software updates. Thank you very much for the support. Like and subscribe as usual, and I'll see you guys in the next video.